progress. That shit cut a little too deep. <laughs> That's a little too real. <laughs> All right, guys, go ahead. It, it, it defensively, as you guys are, are, are trying to figure this out, obviously the personnel is really different from last year. Um, does it start at point of attack with like containment and stuff like that, or is it just a matter of like team defense? It's always going to be team defense, and you guys have to get together. Yeah, I mean, obviously we want to entertain the ball one on one, uh, win our one on one matchups. But you know, if a guy get beat, which guys are going to get beat off the dribble or off the closeout, then our team defense has to be there, and it's not just guarding the first action. You know, they drive, kick it, swing. You know, pick and roll, swing, drive, like. It's multiple actions, and that's where we gotta get better. Just playing through the whole twenty-four. Um, Is that where the Warriors got you guys? Like on second and third stuff? Now? Yeah, I mean, we kind of covered the first, um, and there was a second and third back when you got stuff in the pool, just running around. You know, you, if you relax for one second, you know, they're flying off. So uh, it's a second, third, fourth action that we gotta continue to better. Even when uh, Jason Tatum was out, you guys. That's what you guys did. You guys talk to him about that. And did he, did he explain kind of his his situation to, to any of you guys? And then kind of beyond that, what's it like to have him back uh, after you know, being away for? Yeah, he explained the situation to us. Um, I think it's better if he tell you the situation, but um, it's something that we respected. I mean, obviously, we have things going on. You know, guys' families and their personal beliefs or whatever it was. You know, uh, we respected it and. Um, you know, we try to get him back. I think this summer as, as well. The way he brings our team is unmatched in this league. You know, defensively, you know, he comes in and, and hits two big threes. Um, you know, we're just having that defensive presence, a bigger guy of 94 feet, um, getting to the ball. Um, so it was good when we had the opportunity to, to get him back this year as well. Um, so, you know, we love him here. Um, real cool with him. But I think the whole bubble thing is kind of a, a thing that he should talk to you about. Rob's described you and LeBron as stakeholders when it comes to Ross's decision making. So, was there conversations with him at any point this summer about Avery or right after the Golden State situation happened where he was waived? Did you guys no, I think uh, this <laughs> summer when we knew that he probably could get bought up by Miami, Miami? Yeah, Houston. Houston, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Houston. Um, you know, got brought got brought up to us, and Rob obviously asked us for the whole bubble situation and all that, and make sure we we're all good. And we we're all good. Um, and then in summer, you know, like I said we we had an opportunity, you know, from the buyout. Um, you know, we talked to him for a little bit, didn't work out, and then we had another opportunity, and we were able to to get him the third time around. So. Um, you know, we definitely want him here. You know, like I said, what he can bring to us defensively and offensively is something that we need. Do you think that's something you need all year long? Because he's, you know, his contract situation, he doesn't have that guarantee yet. Um, I think it's something that we have to look at when other guys come back. You know, we got a lot of guys down, so we definitely need them for sure right now. Um, but Wayne's out, okay, none is out, Taylor's out, like our wings are down. Um, and so we got to make sure that we fill those spots and he can do that. Um, if you come in playing like he did, then I don't have to make those decisions, <laughs> you know. So, um, but I know he'll come in and perform, and you know when that time comes to make those decisions, um, we'll do what that's what's saying. Um, I know you're talking the other day, you and LeBron about Russ being hard on himself after the game. What was he like today in practice? Kind of that he was he was himself, you know. As a person and on the floor, you know, he got to some of his moves from post ups, you know, where he scores and dribble back down for his scores and dribble pull ups off the glass. His go to where he, where he scores, talking shit, and he's, he's talking shit to everybody and all that. So uh, he was he was in number, his normal self, and it's good to see that. How he had a day off to kind of just reflect it over, flush it, and then come back to practice, um, and get back to. Than himself, and then you know, hopefully, carry those tomorrow where he, he can be Russell Westbrook. AD, when it comes to being a leader, and not just with Russ, but for this <clears throat> moment, I guess, when it comes in, have you guys figured out just what he needs in the moments to maybe lock back in or what you guys can provide and give him? Um, 
we know him as a person, um, as a friend, brother, but it's our first time I mean, we put on an Olympic team, but that's obviously totally different. Um, all-star games, totally different. But to play in a season um, with them just being the Brown's first time. And so it, it takes time to kind of figure out, okay, this is what he needs to you know, draw him back in or this is what we need to run to kind of get him going or this is what he'd like to do. Um, you know, we're playing three pieces of games, uh, him and Brian. You know, so that rhythm is still coming with all three of us. But uh, he's very vocal, you know, and we know what – he makes sure we know when he doesn't like something. Um, so we're going to make sure that we can do whatever we can to try to help him uh, speed, speed that process up to get him going. But, you know, he'll, he'll be fine. He's got to be himself, like I said before, and, you know, everything will work out for him. Maybe all throughout the season, two weeks ago, you've been playing with the team, having the energy that was active. Is there like a really sense of just love to be out there based on after everything went through the last season? Oh, for sure. Um, I think last season <laughs> made me realize um, I want to play. I love to play the game. And, you know, not being able to play for a significant part of the season um, was just very frustrating. And so now, you know, being out there, you know, one to play the preseason games and um, after game one, you know, just have that energy, that sense of urgency and all the things that you need to to be successful. Um, the game of basketball is fun. You know, the guys that we have on the team, they're fun to play with, cool to be around, uh, which makes that a lot easier to go out there. You know, and then when you got, you know, Russell Westbrook out there and just constantly running around and, and you know, being a loose cannon out there running around, you, just, you kind of just match that energy. Um, you get guys who can push you, you know, though, um, you know, Dwight, DJ, Braun, Melo, all these guys always push me to be better and better. And so that kind of brings you more juice. So, uh, but I think a lot of it comes from just not being able to play as much as I wanted to last year. Right. Any Play or think about being anything in the league, keep us clear the league, or still just be. Um, when the season when the season's over, um, I hope I can be in, the, in those talks. I always want to be in conversation. Uh, I think I'm a caliber of player, but uh, while I'm playing or you know in the course of the season, I don't really listen to it. Obviously, my teammates kind of tell me like, "Yeah, this what you this what you this what you want you to get." But me personally, I. I don't really think about it much. You know, if it happens, it happens. Um, if I go out there and do what I'm supposed to do, you know, hopefully it comes. But, but it's not something that I go out there and every game, like, okay, you need to go and repeat this game, you know, and this game needs to be a significant game, a crazy game. We'll get 50 and stuff like that. I just play within a game and let the game come to me. And, you know, uh, by the end of the year, if that's enough to, you know, win a, a bigger award then. Uh, I'll be glad. Is it important to be considered a really good or great two-way player in the league? Um, I think I am. I mean, I think there's many <laughs> two-way players in the league, you know, so I think I'm already up there. But um, it's something I don't want to get away from. I want to make sure I'm able to keep that narrative where I you know, can be effective on the offensive end and defensive All right. Well, Andrew Trudell on Zoom, please. Hey, what's up, Anthony? Uh, just considering what the personnel is this year and maybe being a little smaller on the perimeter, and uh, that could change with the Ariza. What's up? Is that a Padres hat? No, it's South Bay. Okay, oh, South right. Bay Pony League. Yes. Yeah, it's a kids' baseball team. Yeah, yeah. Well. yeah appreciate you asking, though. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> it's definitely not a Packers hat, I can tell you that. No, I'm a Lakers fan. That's badly yeah. fine, so we take no more bandwidth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can say anything about Aaron Rodgers and his future. Um, Anthony, the, the, the personnel defensively. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Are we good? Okay. Personnel defensively. Does that change how you would play uh, at all and in, in how you can play when you guys are small? Just given that, uh, you know, typically in the past couple of years, you've had some bigger personnel with you at the five. Uh, how does that affect things? And how does that, if at all, affect the way that you play defense this year? Um. I think when I'm at the at the four, we got another guy, the wider DJ out there. Um, defensively, it, it allows me to roam a little bit more so I can get the weak side blocks and, and the weak side steals and things like that. When I'm at the five, I have to, I'm usually in the paint a lot. Um, 
you know, or in a pick and roll. So if a guy's coming off or he swings it and a guy drop, I'm not usually there to help as much. Um, so that's a, that's a, that's the main difference, but also it helps us with our defense when I'm at the five where we can just switch everything um, and keep guys in front. You know, when I'm not, you know, then we, we got the other bigs who we don't want to switch with. And now, um, you know, we hit, we in rotations. And so that's, that's the, that's the thing that we're looking at. You know, we're, that's the thing we're looking at on the defensive end to try to figure out uh, what helps us best. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, well, a couple of seasons ago, we, uh, we came, we played big with Javel and Dwight, um, and the end of quarters, uh, midway through quarters, we switched to me at the five. So that's something we're also looking at. Um, so I think it's going to take a couple of games just to see what's most beneficial for our team and, and go from there. All right. Thanks, Eddie. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.